This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. How would you like a 15% discount to my daily email, the stack of stuff, the show notes, discounts to the conference, all of that? All you need to do is text the word SHOW to 33777. You'll get the annual subscription with a 15% discount to my daily email. You'll get the stack of stuff, the links to the show notes, discounts to the conference, and so much more. All you have to do is text the word SHOW, S-H-O-W, to 33777. Text SHOW to 33777. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Hello, America. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, I am going to alienate and anger some of you right now. Just full disclosure, I'm about to alienate and anger some of you. You're, you're going to yell to the program directors of America, I apologize when you get the angry emails and phone calls. But what I'm saying is true, whether you like to believe it or not. The truth does not care about your feelings. The truth is the truth. It is ironic because I'm being attacked on social media right now by some people. I tweeted out that it was political malpractice for the Republicans not to have had Donald Trump give the State of the Union response. They had Katie Britt of Alabama. They put the female from Alabama in a kitchen to give her response. And y'all, it's just, uh, it wasn't good. They should have had Donald Trump do it. He's their nominee. And I'm being attacked by some who hate Donald Trump saying that, oh my gosh, you've sold out. This is just for your radio audience. You've sold out. And I'm like, no, this is an objective political fact as someone who's run political campaigns. You should have had Donald Trump give you a response. Whether I care for the man or not, I've been critical of him, not a fan, prefer his policies to Biden, but you all know how I feel about him and him about me. Um, but it was it was absolutely political malpractice. Donald Trump would have given a more entertaining and engaging response. It would have been memorable, and when the media stepped out of it, it would have reminded people that the media hates Donald Trump, and they're not going to give him a fair hearing. They should have done it. It was malpractice that they didn't. So I'm getting attacked for being too pro-Trump. Here's where I get attacked for being too not pro-Trump. This morning, when True Social came back online, it crashed. Actually, nope, looks like it was 11.05 p.m. last night. Donald Trump tweeted this. If you get rid of TikTok, Facebook and Zucker schmuck will double their business. I don't want Facebook, who cheated in the last election, doing better. They are a true enemy of the people. Full disclosure, I know Donald Trump and I know Mark Zuckerberg. And I would rather spend an afternoon with Mark Zuckerberg than with Donald Trump. Say what you will about Facebook, and I've said much about Facebook that I disagree with. Facebook refuses to operate in China, and when China started curbing uh, rights in Hong Kong, pulled out of Hong Kong and gave up a significant chunk of business in China and Hong Kong and a large revenue stream because they didn't want the Chinese to access their database. China requires that if you do business in China, all of your internet business through China route through Chinese servers that the Chinese communists get to access. And Mark Zuckerberg's wife, uh, it, her family fled. The, the history of her family were people who had to be refugees from the communists. They ultimately came to the United States. He is not a supporter of communism, communists, or the Chinese Communist Party. You may not like him, 
but he is a com- he is a man who puts his company as an American company, not as a global elitist company. You can disagree with what they did in the election in 2020. You can call it Zuckbucks, whatever you want to call it. But I, for one, would far prefer our children use Facebook than use TikTok, which is overseen by the Chinese Communist Party, which has developed TikTok as a spy app against the United States. And you need have no more proof of that than what TikTok did yesterday in the United States Congress. Congress is considering a bill that would force ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, to divest its ties to the Chinese Communist Party. This legislation has nothing to do, nothing to do with the content of TikTok. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment and free speech. It has nothing to do with any of that. What it has to do with is that the Chinese Communist Party controls ByteDance, the owner of TikTok, and we know that China has been adjusting the algorithm to pollute the minds of American children. Unless you have an established account on TikTok, when you establish an account on TikTok, your algorithm defaults to pro-transgender activism and pro-Hamas activism. Your default algorithm on TikTok when you start an account defaults to the left and left-wing talking points and anti-American talking points. China has seeded anti-American propaganda throughout TikTok, and China has access to the database and servers to surveil the American public. For Donald Trump to defend TikTok is highly irresponsible and suggests that a second term of Donald Trump would all be about grievance and revenge at the expense of the integrity and national security of the United States. And that's a problem. This was a mistake on his part. Yesterday on Capitol Hill, members of Congress began getting phone calls from children. Many of them, and this is not an exaggeration, many of the children who called yesterday when TikTok put out a push alert to its audience with the phone numbers for members of Congress telling the kids who use TikTok to call their congressman to save TikTok, many of the kids said they would commit suicide if TikTok were shut down because TikTok told the kids that Congress wants to shut down TikTok, which isn't true. Now, here's the irony here. The delicious irony is that one of the pieces of information Congress has gathered against TikTok is that TikTok, on behalf of the communist Chinese, pushes out Uh, disinformation to the American public. And here comes TikTok pushing out disinformation to the American public, telling American kids that they're going to turn off TikTok, which is not true. Congress is perfectly happy to allow TikTok to exist, just not in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. So kids were calling Congress yesterday saying they were going to commit suicide or kill the members of Congress. A bunch of senior citizens did this as well, but mostly it was teenagers. Now, the fact of the matter is teenagers don't vote. But because TikTok did this, this is the first time I can recall a contentious piece of legislation passing a congressional committee unanimously, 50 to nothing. It's gone to the floor of the House. This legislation is necessary. It's disturbing that Donald Trump would put his grudges and grievances against Facebook over this legislation. Donald Trump is advancing the interests of the Chinese Communist Party by nursing his grudge against Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. That's a fact. You don't like it. I realize it. Some of you are yelling at me now in your car or in your office. Some of you are reaching to switch me off. But you better accept it as a fact that by Donald Trump trying to kill this piece of legislation, he's advancing China's interests over the national security of the United States, all because he's mad at Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. All the legislation does, maybe no one's told him. Maybe he doesn't understand it. Maybe he was lied to, or maybe it's Jeff Yass who is a massive conservative donor to certain members of Congress who are opposed to the TikTok legislation. He is a, a big club for growth guy. He's a, he supported Thomas Massey and several others. He's very libertarian. He's opposed to the legislation. He's a massive investor in TikTok. 
He happens to have a massive investment in TikTok, and he's been writing checks, I suspect, to help Donald Trump. So is Trump actually nursing a grudge or listening to a donor? Either way, it's upsetting because TikTok is an, a, a threat to our national security. TikTok, as it is controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, has literally been flooding our children with indoctrination and transgenderism, so they'll consent to sterilization. They've been force-feeding our kids propaganda about Hamas and the Palestinians to hate the Jews. If you don't have your TikTok set up and ready to go already, you're going to see that algorithm. If you don't believe me, go set up a brand new TikTok account on a separate device, different from your current device because they'll have the MAC address for your device. Go get someone else's phone that's never used TikTok. Set up a TikTok account and watch the default algorithm slowly program your brain to hate America. It's what the Chinese Communist Party does. Not only that, but whether it did that or not, it would still be dangerous because China will have a backdoor on your device to spy on you. And you think, well, Erickson, I don't care. You don't care. What about when your kid later in life goes to get a job and, oh, when you were 16 years old, here are the things you were looking at on TikTok when your parents went around. In the second hour of this program today, I covered this news story that's not getting enough attention. A sergeant in the Army in military intelligence has been selling our military secrets to China made $42,000 selling American classified information about our handling of Taiwan and its military capabilities to the Chinese. 25-year-old. Now, when your 16-year-old is 25 and gets in the Army and China approaches them and says, we're going to destroy you. We know what you've been looking at on your phone because we've been surveilling your phone through TikTok, and we know these are the sorts of sites you accessed, and we've built a psychographic profile, and we know about your deviancies online that you think no one knows. Give us the information or we're going to destroy you. Do you really not believe the Chinese communists wouldn't stoop that low? Do you really not believe they can't? You people already think your phones listen to you and because you get the advertisements, and maybe they do. If you think that every other app on your phone is doing that, think about what the Chinese communists who hate the United States and want to undermine us are doing. And Donald Trump is calling for that app to be preserved because he doesn't like Facebook. TikTok is dangerous. You see it as an innocuous app that makes you happy. What you don't see are the Chinese using the data off your phone to profile you. What you don't see is China using the data off the phones of other people using TikTok who are more significant in national security than you so that China can undermine them. And what you don't see is the information China is pushing to your child on their device through TikTok to indoctrinate them against your country that you love. This legislation needs to pass Congress. TikTok to Linda Est. TikTok must be destroyed. So long as it's controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. The legislation that advanced 50 to nothing. Ask yourself, in a bitterly divided Congress where everybody hates each other, when is the last time such a significant piece of legislation passed 50 to nothing? This legislation needs to pass, and Donald Trump should walk back his complaints because the legislation preserves TikTok. It allows TikTok to continue on so long as it's not controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. That's what the legislation does. It's not a free speech legislation. It's not about the First Amendment. It's about the Chinese Communist Party controlling an app used by so many Americans and using that app for nefarious purposes, weaponizing against you, weaponizing it against your kid, weaponizing it against this country in ways you can't even conceive of right now, and the Chinese are five steps ahead of you. Multiple members of our military intelligence community are selling secrets to China already. Think about when China no longer has to buy those secrets because they can force people through blackmail of what they've done on their devices that they've stalked them through with TikTok on their phones to be able to get their way. TikTok is a national security threat as it exists. 
It seems like a harmless, innocuous app until you start studying what the Chinese Communist Party is doing with it. It needs to go and shame on Donald Trump for saying that it should be preserved because he's mad at Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is not a traitor to this country, and Mark Zuckerberg shut down his company in China and sacrificed all of that revenue because he didn't want to be controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. You may have any criticism you want, but the man gave up a fortune doing business in China because he didn't want the Chinese Communists controlling his app. And this former president, who wants to be the next president, is willing to preserve a company in the control of the Chinese Communist Party just because he's mad at another American. That's not the way to conduct business or the national security policy of this country. TikTok, Delinda Est. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. Let's squeeze a phone call in here. Joe, you're up next. Welcome. How are you? Uh, very good. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, I want to talk about democracy under attack, which the only thing I agreed with uh, Biden on. And uh, but the only thing is he's got it all wrong because, yes, we are under attack, but it's through him and the Democrat Party. Just look at what happened in Colorado. And the Supreme Court I'm so had glad to you come said that. Slap them down. <laughs> you know, it, it is. It, uh, the, it, I have said, gosh, since Donald Trump was running in, in 2015 when he came up the escalator or came down the escalator, I, I have said the entire time that Donald Trump's singular unique superpower is that he gets everyone who hates him to behave in the way they think he is. Not that he is, but the way they think he is. The left thinks Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, so what do they do? They start trying to, by fiat, take him off the ballots in states to deprive people of a Democratic vote, doing exactly what they say that he did every single time. Or or look at the guys who they they attack Donald Trump for his his personal character, and it turns out they're the ones who stiff the waiters with tips, and and they behave badly to others and beat their wives and, and you name it. Uh, you, you got the the what the Lincoln Project people who, who who covered for the for the guy who was abusing the miners or what have you. It, it's just these people. Donald Trump brings out in other people the very worst in them. They behave exactly as they claim he does. They think he's a threat to democracy, so they have become a threat to democracy. It, it really is a fascinating psychological thing that very few people comment on because they hate him. But it's true. It, it, it doesn't matter who he is or what his character is. If you perceive Donald Trump behaves in a way and you hate him, you will inevitably become that way. It's remarkable to watch. It is his superpower. Now, my superpower is telling you about stamps.com and how to save money through great advertisers like stamps.com, like me. In fact, I used them yesterday after I got home. I had to send some packages out. Every week I've been using stamps.com. I'm not making it up. I really use them, stamps.com, and I can get pick up at my office. In fact, yesterday I had five packages I had to send out and they came to my office and whisked them away while I was on air. I never even realized they were here. They just took them. Hopefully it was them. It was them. I got the confirmations. You can get UPS or post office. You can save up to 89% off uh, their rates. You can find the cheapest option or the fastest option. You can print your labels. All you need is a mobile device or your computer and a printer. You print your labels and off it goes. With stamps.com, they'll even send you a free digital scale so you can weigh everything out and get it right. Go to stamps.com, click the microphone, put in my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Stamps.com, click the mic, put in my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. You get a free digital scale. You'll get some free postage. No long-term commitment, no contract to sign. You can cancel at any time, but you will save when you ship with stamps.com, and it's super convenient. Stamps.com, click the mic, put in my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Hello, folks. It is Eric Erickson here. The last half hour of the week, the phone number is 877-973-7425. It has been a pleasure to to start seeing phone calls come in from Dayton, Tulsa, uh, and from Jacksonville, and even Kansas City. Uh, I've gotten phone calls around the country, calls coming in. It's great uh, to spread across the country. I, I I, I do want to tell you guys one thing. You can laugh. You can roll your eyes. So, you know, I got my pizza oven outside. It's an outdoor oven. I intend to be doing some cooking this weekend. You should follow me on Instagram. If you text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, 
to 33777. You can follow me around the internet. The Instagram link is there. It's E.W. Erickson everywhere. YouTube, you can subscribe to me there. We put up the show clips uh, and, and the monologues on YouTube. Uh, we're trying to actually grow YouTube. Now, a number of people have emailed in and said, why aren't you using Rumble as much? I will tell you, it is a practical thing. It has nothing to do with, with Rumble other than it is practical. So for those of you who are not technically proficient, when you upload a video, it has to be converted. It I can upload a multi-gigabyte uh, 4K video file of one of my 12 to 13-minute monologues to YouTube, and it takes it a few minutes to process and load. With Rumble, it takes forever. It is a very slow process. And we have limited hands on deck at this program, and so we are, for better or worse, sticking with YouTube um, which has a, a broader reach and ability in large part because of the technical proficiencies and stability of the platform. Uh, I'm not opposed to Rumble, and in fact, I had Rumble set up so that it would just pull my stuff in from YouTube, and it could take its time, but Rumble has degraded that capability, and, and that's why. It has nothing to do with the platform itself, uh, my views on it, other than the technical proficiency of it. So follow me on YouTube. Uh, but text ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Get all the social media links. Now... It is an open line Friday. People got some thoughts themselves. I want to go to Mike. Welcome to the show, Mike. How are you? I'm good, Eric. How are you doing? Great. What's going on? Well, first of all, I want to say you're a great American. But well, uh, thank you. The second thing is you're welcome, and and you are. But I just wanted to ask the question, and I think it was spurred on by a term I heard on uh, on the show the other day: or the the evil of the two lessers. Yes. Well, the question is, the question is, is it time for a viable third party candidate? And and if so, then who's going to benefit from the uh, vote change, either Trump or Biden? OK, uh, that is a great question. Um, I here's my my thinking. Um, I think the Republican Party is transforming into the viable third party. Now, let me explain this to you. Here's what all of the data that I have ever studied says. The sweet spot in American politics is socially conservative, fiscally liberal. The Democrats are fiscally liberal, fiscally conservative. The Republicans had been, at least in speech, fiscally conservative and socially conservative, but actually pretty fiscally liberal and increasingly socially liberal. And it's alienating the parties as the Republican Party becomes a party that is willing to spend money and prop up the social safety net, but is socially conservative. It's becoming that third party um, that can attract Hispanic and black voters who do believe that there needs to be a federal national social safety net. Now, we've got some third parties out there, liber libertarians, for example. The problem with the libertarians is the libertarians aren't libertarian. They're libertine. Uh, they've been taken over by the, the pro-prostitution, pro-drug groups, and they can't win national elections because they're kind of crazy. Uh, Ronald Reagan used to say libertarianism was the heart of the GOP and the heart of conservatism, and it is, but that's different from libertine who's perfectly fine with the government growing as long as you get to have sex and do drugs. Uh, and that that's that's the problem. The libertarians had a they've got ballot access and, and can't win. Uh, Robert Kennedy is intriguing for a lot of people because Robert Kennedy is coming off as this third party questioning the elite, questioning the government, questioning the science. He, he's skeptical of vaccines. But I think as if there, some money is spent to expose Robert Kennedy's views overall, that's going to tear up his ability to mount a third party. What do I mean? It's not just he's skeptical of the covid vaccine. Robert Kennedy is one of the leading uh, conspiracy theorists when it comes to all vaccines. And we have, what, 50 years of data on, on most vaccines. The MMR and others actually work quite successfully and don't cause autism, unlike some people claim, uh, and are actually good for kids. Now, we have all of the data on Robert Kennedy and his views on guns, and he is a gun-grabbing gun controller who wants to take your guns. It is weird to me. I've got a friend of mine who's a big Second Amendment advocate who, because of COVID, is all in on Robert Kennedy. I was like, your number one issue is guns. Do you not understand that this man supports gun control? He's like, well, it'll never pass Congress. Are you sure? Um, 
Robert Kennedy is a social liberal as well. Um, he's masking himself to try to lure Trump voters away. I actually think he's going to hurt Joe Biden and help Donald Trump. Uh, and I just I, I watching a Democrat lose because of a Kennedy would actually be a hilarious thing as a student of politics to watch. Um, if the Republican Party resumes its its fiscal and social conservatism or abandons its social conservatism, as some of the GOP want because of abortion, they want to win and they think abortion's a loser, I think a third party emerges. But the only thing that the Republicans and Democrats hate more than each other is a third party. And the Republicans and the Democrats have together around the nation conspired to make it very difficult for a third party to gain traction. And I don't see that changing, actually. Um, It's very difficult. We are a two-party nation. And as much as people don't like that, it's actually not a bad thing. Because to win, you have to have a broad as possible coalition. And that means your party sometimes has to sacrifice some of its core tenets in order to win. And that provides more stability in our system than a system, for example, like Italy, that has five or six major viable parties, or France, and you have this constant turnover and cycle and instability in government. I think our system, for all of its faults, is way more stable and better than the others. But I, as someone who is a fiscal conservative, I'm concerned that both parties are becoming so fiscally reckless, we are rapidly going off the Thelma and Louise-style cliff of uh, fiscal demise at a time we need to be more fiscally secure. J.C., you're going to be up next. Welcome. Yeah, how you doing, Eric? Uh, JT here. Good to uh, talk with you again. Um, it's funny the president mentioned in his um, speech last night about crime, and I know you've heard. I don't know what is going on with um, Governor Hochul in New York. She has the National Guard in the subway now, and my home state, Pennsylvania, just south of there, right before I called you, they're talking about having the National Guard on our public transit system, probably in Philadelphia because of the recent violence. So. I think that's extreme. And before I hang up from you, I just want to throw a funny bomb at you. On the Willis, uh, current Willis scandal, um, they, it seems like people are ignoring that, from what I heard, that they did make trips to the White House to let the Biden administration uh, yes. know what was going on with what they, uh, what they were doing in terms of pursuing Trump in that case. And let's play comparison, Eric. Doesn't this scandal remind you, I don't know, of a former California AG, senator, uh, current VP, a la Kamala Harris, uh, you know, hey. You, you mean Willie Matthew. Brown's side chick? Yeah, hello. <laughs> you, you, you hear me? <laughs> I knew. Eric, I, I, was playing, I went to play that card with you, man. <laughs> yes. Yes, let's not forget how Kamala Harris got her start. Yes. Um, right, wait a minute, did, did it with grandpa and daddy? Ew. Yeah, I, I, y'all, um, yes, I, I, I'm trying to, to leave. I'm trying not to make jokes about carpet burn on knees, but let's oh, let's just yeah. be honest about how you Kamala so Harris wrong. got her start. Because it's y'all can be offended at JC and me telling you the truth, but it's the truth that Kamala Harris and, and Willie Brown had this relationship, and he helped her, well, gosh, the puns rate the themselves. Rise in, rise in power, yeah, in more ways than one. Yeah, JC, i got to let you go because we're, we're going to get ourselves in trouble here telling the truth to people, but it's true. It is true. Any, if you know about Kamala Harris in, in power, it's it's true. And, and now you got Fawny Willis, and either way, the difference is I don't think Fawny Willis is going to go as far because Nathan Wade doesn't have the political connections to – be able to help her, and, and together their arrogance is going to collapse them. Now, to J.C.'s point on the National Guard, I continue to find it hilarious in 2020, June 3rd of 2020, my birthday, can't forget the date, Tom Cotton's op-ed in the New York Times calling for the National Guard. And there was a meltdown of the New York Times, which today is applauding Kathy Hochul sending the National Guard into the subways in New York. It is a failure of local progressive prosecutions that this is going to have to happen. And it's not a coincidence. The Philadelphia district attorney was one of those people, the um, uh, what it was, the, the Soros organization funded. He is a far left progressive. At the same time, y'all, these people are getting what they voted for. The crime in these cities is what they voted for. In Austin, Texas, the progressive prosecutor who has sparked a crime wave there with his lackadaisical prosecutions and seen all the police quit 
he got reelected or, or he got renominated in the Democratic primary. A Republican's not going to beat him in Travis County, Texas. The people of that county are getting what they voted for. And at some point, the people have to suffer through the consequences of their votes. They just have to. And I feel horrible for the people in those counties that voted against them. But this is the way democracy works. The minority isn't oftentimes stuck with the results of the majority. And if the minority cannot persuade the majority that they need to change course, they get stuck. It's sad to see, but it's, it is the reality. It is the reality. And the reality is terrible in these places. If progressives continue to not take crime seriously and enforce the law and impose order, more and more Americans will move to the right. It is not just the economy causing black and Hispanic voters to move to the GOP. It is crime as well. The people who are hardest hit when you defund the police are the poor non-white communities where crime soars because those upper income white people, they can pay for private security in their neighborhoods and they all have guns. And when the white person shoots the person breaking into their house, they actually have an easier time dealing with the justice system than the poor black person who does the same thing. That's God's honest truth. Crime is persuading black and Hispanic and Asian voters to vote for the GOP. You will note again, this country stopped having conversations about Asian violence when it turned out the Asians were being abused by young black men more than any other group. It's pushing people to the right. Progressives came to power in cities. They got hold of district attorney's offices with the help of groups like George Soros' organizations, playing a very long game, and they won. Conservatives had their eye off the prize. Conservatives were looking to Washington, D.C., and they forgot to play politics in their local backyard and win races. And the left has, and they've tried to lock in power. And what's happening? It's pushing non-white voters to the right. And the day will come when the non-white voters and the white working class, all voting Republican, push out the progressive prosecutors and the progressives who cause law and disorder, lawlessness and disorder around the country. Pendulums swing. There is no such thing as permanence in politics. It may be a very long time, even in places like California, but the pendulum eventually swings back. It always does. You learn these things by taking classes at Hillsdale College. They have been teaching Americans about American history, the patterns in politics and process, and right now they want to teach you about citizenship and its decline in America and how to revitalize it with none other Then Victor Davis Hanson, the rock star historian, military history, phenomenal guy. All you have to do is go to ericforhillsdale.com, E-R-I-C-K, ericforhillsdale.com. You go to ericforhillsdale.com, you sign up, and you can take the classes from Victor Davis Hanson for free. There are a series of lectures. He's already done them, and you can take them at your own pace. They are about American citizenship, what it is, why it's important, why it's in decline, how to revitalize it, why it matters. You can take them at your own pace, and then you can develop a long-term relationship with Hillsdale College. Eric, E-R-I-C-K, Eric for Hillsdale.com. Hillsdale College is the foremost, foremost conservative institution in this country for higher education. They are good people. Larry Arn is a scholar. A, he is a um, monk for the mind of conservatism in this country. He, he leads this institution to restore, protect, revitalize, defend, and teach about the founding of this country, its constitutional structure and federalism, and he wants you to be a part of it. Eric, E-R-I-C-K, Eric for Hillsdale.com. Go sign up today and take this class on citizenship from Victor Davis Hanson. It is terrific. I've gone through it. It is wonderful. You learn so much, and you can share it with your friends and family. Eric for Hillsdale.com. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. Glad to have you with me. The full number, well, it's too late at the end of the show to give you the full number, but I hope you guys have a great weekend. You know, there's so much other news we did not get to today. Let me just give you a taste of some of the news that's out there because, well, the news doesn't stop. I I, I gotta say, if you will recall, uh, during the um, COVID era, When Donald Trump was president, it's like every single day the news cycle changed rapidly. Every day, Donald Trump would tweet something, and suddenly the news cycle is off to the races on something completely different. And then COVID hit, and it's like the entire nation ground to a halt. 
And I kind of just feel like the we're, we're back there at this time with with Joe Biden because the news moves so slowly. But at the end of the day, let me tell you this. Uh, the government is coming out and saying essentially they can find no evidence of aliens. You know, we've had all these reports about UFOs that have come out. Uh, what we know from sources within the military is that they have not tried to reverse engineer alien technology, and a lengthy Department of Defense review has come out and said essentially these unidentified anomalous phenomenon, also called UFOs, UAPs or uh, UFOs, they um, there's no evidence of aliens visiting Earth. I could have told you that. What the report says is, uh, quote, no evidence that any U.S. government investigation, academic sponsored research or official review panel has confirmed that any sighting of a UAP represented extraterrestrial technology. Uh, they were ordinary objects and phenomenon and the result of misidentification, sometimes by well-meaning witnesses who thought they spotted something otherworldly. The Department of Defense's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office uh, addressed the allegations made, for example, about uh, downed alien aircraft and corpses, saying, uh, it has determined based on all information provided to date that claims involving specific people, known locations, technological tests, and documents allegedly involved in or related to the reverse engineering of extraterrestrial technology are inaccurate. Now, some of you obviously will not believe this because it's the government and the military telling you this, and uh, you'd rather believe the cover-up, but really, aliens? Here's what's actually going on here is the government has released and leaked all the alien stuff to distract from the fact that China is exercising militarily technological superiority to the United States. And it has been processed by people as alien technology as opposed to the Chinese are ahead of us. A couple of members of the United States Senate who have been briefed privately on this have had conversations with me. They will not release classified information to me, obviously. But when I raised my theory that what we're actually witnessing are the Chinese, they raised their eyebrows and said, you might say that, but I can't comment. I think that's what's happening here. I honestly don't believe that there are aliens out there who have established travel faster than the speed of light to get here. To the extent that there are, it's probably more angels and demons than aliens, but I don't even know that we've opened this dimension between us and God for all the good and bad to come out of there, the things of the unknown, unseen realm. I just think we've got other countries that are playing with us. It's probably China, and we should wise up to that before it's too late.